Hymn of praise is number 92, Angels from the Realms of Glory. question this morning and that is what does it take to make you happy at Christmas time? 
I suspect most of the adults in the room would be happy if they have family or some friends close by to spend the holidays with. But now the next question is this, is there anything that could happen at Christmas time that would rob you of your joy? That's where we need to make the distinction between happiness and joy. So theoretically, you could be very unhappy about something, but still joyful in your hearts. Jesus Christ is the true source of joy in the world, so if our faith is rooted in him, then we have that source of true joy with us all the time. In this crazy world we live in, it seems like every time you turn around, someone is unhappy about something and probably also is not very joyful either. And oftentimes you can point out these people because they seem to be determined to spread their misery to others. If you're like me, you've had it up to here with the controversy over Merry Christmas versus Happy Holidays. And you know, can you say Christmas or not? Last year there was a new controversy, maybe you heard about it, that uh, Christmas song that comes out this time of year, Baby It's Cold Outside. And now that was not meant to be what we all know it was meant to be and without getting all the details of that it just seems that some people who lack joy in their lives uh, they are just concerned with such trivial things and again they want to spread this misery to other people well joy naturally is what we'll be looking at this morning as we uh, uh, look at what I hope is a very familiar passage of scripture to you this is the passage where Mary the mother of Jesus is pregnant and she travels to meet her cousin Elizabeth who was also pregnant miraculously as well and we'll be looking at looking at seven, seven verses in Luke chapter 1 and uh, we will begin, if you're following in your pew Bible, on page 724, reading from verses 39 through 45. The word of the Lord says, at, the, at that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. May the Lord's blessing be added to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Morning, a couple brief points we'll explore. Uh, first things first is Mary illustrates uh, taking joy in God's plan for her life. One thing we notice when you go back a few verses before the ones that we read uh, the verbs that are used to describe Mary, the things that she does, they're very active in nature. Um, I, from verses 29 through 40, I counted seven different actions that she does. She wondered, she asked, she answered, she got ready and hurried, she entered, and then she greeted. And this is how this is linked to joy. You see, you can be sure that the enemy was doing everything that he could to get Mary uh, to uh, lose her joy uh, during this time. He knew that she was chosen by God for a very special task. And it's a very important concept to remember that one of the best ways to avoid focusing on the enemy is to just keep busy doing the Lord's work. Admittedly, that's easier said than done in practice. Uh, you can't always avoid these negative thoughts that want to creep into your mind from time to time. Uh, the enemy never takes a day off. We know that. But the joy in our hearts can make it easier for us to withstand his assault. In relative luxury and wealth that we enjoy in this country, sometimes we lose perspective of what true joy does look like. Uh, take, for instance, a true story of a man who lives in Iraq. His name is Amer, and I found this in an article published by the Samaritan's Purse. 
like any Christian, a mayor was minding his own business uh, sometime last year, trying to live a productive life when the Islamic terrorists of ISIS rolled into town. In the public square, they made an announcement that all Christians had to, 24 hours to leave or else they would be beheaded. I guess at least they gave them notice, but they got one day to get all their stuff together and get out. So imagine if you're this man and his fellow Christian friends in this town that you have to leave in a day. That's not enough time to sell your home, sell your business, get your things in order. It's not even enough time to organize a yard sale, really, to get a few dollars for the road. In other words, everything you've worked hard for your whole life is completely gone. You have to leave it or else you're going to die. Well, of course, if this were any of us, no one would expect us to be happy about this news. Um, but a person like a mayor who truly has the joy of Christ in his heart, uh, he knows that God has a plan for him. And he expressed joy when a uh, journalist asked him about this. And his words are this. This is a Christian religion, not houses, cars, or money. When we feel hungry, tired, or cold, living in this cold room like a refrigerator, our Jesus felt like this. I am, uh, he, and he says, Jesus... Uh, in regards to Jesus, I am not sad, I am happy because our Jesus told us to leave everything and come to him and he will help us, end quote. It's obvious he's not happy about losing everything that he owned and he's not happy that he had to settle into a refugee camp either. Although he has very little to his name, he simply accepts this persecution in his life as the cross that Christ has called him to bear, and he does that joyfully. Story reminds me of the author of Hebrews, who writes in the chapter 10, You endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. It may seem unusual to us, but I think we are unusual as Christians and in the United States in that we don't tend to suffer persecution greatly. A mayor is not unique because Christians all over the world know the suffering that he uh, deals with. And he also knows that something much better awaits him. He is an example of a true follower of Jesus. And I mean, how many people, when you accepted Christ into your life, uh, probably a long time ago, were sat down and told, now, by accepting Jesus, this means you could lose your life. Probably not. You know, we, that's not in our evangelistic mode here in the United States. These people, though, they accept the responsibility that comes with being a believer in Jesus Christ, and they do so joyfully. He, that is a mayor, uh, is an example of man, a man who accepted Christ into his life, knowing full well the day might come where he's called to lose his life for his faith. And that is a responsibility that he doesn't accept happily, but he does accept joyfully. He's a very good segue from having joy in God's plan to having joy despite our circumstances. As I said a little bit ago, this man, a mayor, is a product, was a productive follower of Christ until ISIS rolled into town. And they delivered this proclamation that they had to get out or die. And so his world was literally turned upside down within the span of one day. Oftentimes in life, unplanned things happen. And no matter how we try to be prepared, we always seem to find ourselves reacting to events. When your world is shaken in a dramatic way, does your joy rise to the top or does your unhappiness take over? 
Again, that's the enemy is always there trying to play off of your misfortune, encouraging you to uh, wallow in self-pity and feel sorry for yourself. That's where a little bit of perspective helps us. For a mayor in Iraq, he's thankful that at least he wasn't in prison for his faith. So he knows in all actuality it really could be worse than losing his home and business. Yet, here in America, are our fuses a little shorter though? Do we get all out of sorts whenever the internet goes down or when this happens or that happens? Whether it's any of these things that happen or something completely else unforeseen, how much of life actually goes according to our plan? Well, not much, I would say, from my experience. And if it, uh, uh, but I, I don't know how any of us would act if we were in the shoes of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, talk about having to deal with unplanned circumstances there. Nowadays, you hear a lot about women and their unplanned pregnancies, and then we want to help them and work through that. And I don't ever want to sound insensitive to women who are dealing with these things who are pregnant. But I think Mary redefined what an unplanned pregnancy is. Despite these unforeseen circumstances, how does she react? Well, look at her words. She says, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Could you say, let it be to me according to your word, like she did? Like a mare, <clears throat> we may face difficulty in our circumstances, but consider Mary. She certainly wasn't intending to have a baby whenever God chose her to do so. And despite the circumstances, she emerged from the situation with joy. We can't compare anything that we have ever dealt with to what Mary was called to do. You've probably been uh, around people who get all out of sorts whenever their world gets shaken up, something uh, catastrophic happens. Well, Mary is the example for us there. And she also leads to our last point this morning, which concerns having joy in hearing God's voice. There's a lot packed in the very few Verses whenever she uh, arrives at Elizabeth's house. And the upshot of this is that Mary calls out for her cousin and immediately upon hearing her voice, uh, she, Elizabeth, instinctively knows that the Christ child is near because Elizabeth's baby in her womb leaps for joy. Well, that's very telling on a lot of different levels here, but the application is yet another illustration of joy that results from Jesus Christ. If you go back to the Old Testament, 1 Kings 19 has these words. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not at the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. It's awesome to consider how the whisper of God is much mightier than the fiercest earthquake we can imagine. And how his whisper brings joy to the hearts of all who listen. All Elizabeth had to do was simply hear Mary's voice. For the unborn baby to react to Jesus being near. And in the same way, everyone that we come in contact with in a day's time should hear Jesus in our voice in the same way as we are carrying his message. I can tell you that for me, it's a lot easier to be joyful around Christmas time than the rest of the year. For me, there is absolutely nothing else like Christmas time. And I'm not much of a fan of hypothetical situations. How would you respond in this situation or that? A lot of them aren't very realistic, but here's one anyway, just to ponder. If someone told you that you had one of two options, that for the rest of your life, you either could not celebrate your own birthday or you could never celebrate Christmas again. I know for me, I wouldn't hesitate to give up my birthday. And it's not even close for me. I mean, my birthday for me at this 
age as a reminder that I'm getting older and slower and grayer and <laughs> more snow on the roof, as they say, that kind of thing. Sooner or later, um, we just, uh, well, I should say, Christmas, on the other hand, is pure joy. Okay, again, at our birthdays, we tend to think of, as you get older, you think about the negative things of having a birthday. But I can't think of any negative things about Christmas ever. It's pure joy at the thought that our Savior was born and that God humbled himself to the point of becoming a man for the sole purpose of saving us from the consequences of our sins. People are always joyful when a baby is born anyway. And this was the most significant baby ever born. It was a gift from God himself. So that is great cause for celebration. As he grew and matured, Jesus became God's voice for all to hear. As through the Bible, and we still hear his voice today. I'm going to close out shortly here by saying that the joy we feel in our hearts that as children of God doesn't magically make our problems disappear. I think we all know that. Oftentimes as followers of Jesus, life actually gets more difficult after you become a Christian as seen in the real life story of this man in Iraq. So no, God doesn't remove us from the storms of life, but rather he walks with us through those storms. And I suggest this week going back and reading Matthew 14. This is not the nativity story, but this is the story where Peter walks on water. Take notice of the details there. How the waves were beating against the boat and it said that Peter saw the wind. Well, Jesus didn't stop the storm for him, but he used it to prove his power over the storm. And the same applies to our lives. If you have true joy in your hearts, I think that you recognize joy in large doses at Christmas time. And joy is nothing less than a blessing from God because it's a sign of what God has done for us. The enemy knows the relationship that we share with God and he hates it and he wants to steal that from us. And he wants us to lose sight of our joy and distract us, especially at this time of year. Take our focus off God. But look once more at Mary. When the enemy is trying to steal joy, she sought out the one person who might understand her, and that was Elizabeth, who was miraculously pregnant as well. Do you think the, it was a coincidence that Elizabeth and Mary were both dealing with these things and happened to be related to each other? I don't think that was coincidence. I think that was in God's perfect plan that their paths would cross and they could both lift each other up and nurture each other. That's the way, that's when we see the way John John the Baptist leaped for joy in her womb, even though he wasn't even born yet. Joy comes with God's call in a person's life, and joy is seen in the greatest gift ever, eternal life. At Christmas, we see this in the baby in the manger, At Easter time, we're more focused on a grown man dying on a cross. But either way, it isn't just a message today for the Advent season, because joy in Christ isn't with us only at Christmas time. It stays with us all year long. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer.